Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru, and today in our 10th and final episode, keeping our tanks clean and our gear running right. Before getting into our maintenance tasks, there's one piece of gear we've yet to install. Auto top off units replace evaporated water automatically, meaning we don't have to remember to manually add in RODI water daily. There are different types of auto top off unit sensors, including float, optical, and titanium. And there's an auto top off unit that fits every situation. One of my favorite, which also happens to be one of the most affordable, is the Reef Breeders Prism Auto Top Off. I placed this unit in the return pump chamber and connected the flexible tubing and pump to my five gallon reservoir inside the cabinet stand. I'm also going to install the Neptune optical sensor low down in my reservoir to alert me when it's time for a refill. Keeping our tank clean involves controlling what nutrients we're adding, how we're removing pollutants, and keeping our gear in tip-top shape and running smoothly. This involves some basic maintenance tasks, starting with the ones we have to do every day. First up is observing our tank. We're really only going to get to know it intimately if we spend time with our tank every day. How are the fish behaving? Are there any weird sounds? Is all the gear working right? Just grabbing a chair and staring at your tank for at least 10 minutes a day will help you learn your system and then you'll know when a problem occurs and be able to fix it before it spirals out of control. The second daily task, obviously we need to feed our livestock. It's important to watch and make sure that our fish are actually eating. It's also a good time to inspect them to make sure they look plump, healthy, and disease free. Because our catamorpha is growing, it is sucking up iron and other trace elements to keep it happy and thus removing nitrates and phosphates from our tank, we will dose a cap full of Brightwell Aquatics Cato Grow daily. And our fourth and final daily task, at least for the first few weeks, is to remove any dead or dying snails. For various reasons, some snails will die or get partially eaten by hermit crabs. By removing them before they decompose, that means we're keeping all of that ammonia out of our water column. Feel free to put the empty shells back in the tank though, because as your hermit crabs grow, they'll need a bigger home. With our daily tasks done, time to move on to our twice a week tasks. And that's pretty easy because I only have one of them, change the filter socks. There may come a time when my hang on the back refugium is actually full of Kato and I no longer need filter socks, but until that day arrives, it's important to change your filter socks out every three days. We've done tests here at BRS and found that in order for filter socks to be effective at removing phosphates and nitrates, you really do have to remove them every three days. I have several extra filter socks lying around, that way I don't have to wash them every single week. Now onto our weekly tasks, starting with water testing. Because I haven't added any corals, it's really pretty easy. I'll test for ammonia for the first several weeks just to make sure there is no post-livestock spike. It's always a good idea to check for salinity, especially since I've set up an auto water change system and something could go awry. Then I just need to test my nitrates and my phosphates as these are the two water parameters that will tell me if my filtration is working or if I need to make some changes. The second weekly task is pretty self-explanatory. Refill my auto top-off reservoir with RODI water. Weekly task number three, scrape the glass. Because I picked up a whole bunch of banded trochus snails, my glass is actually pretty clean. But the glass still gets that really hard to scrape green algae that seems to happen after the trochus snails have gone over it. And that requires me to use the stainless steel portion of my flipper magnetic algae scraper. Weekly task number four, removing dirty water from the right bucket and adding in fresh seawater to the left bucket. I just leave a NUA MP1200 in the dirty side attached to my Apex EB8 bar, so I just need to flip a switch and the task is done. For me, every other week task start with some salt creep removal. Using a toothbrush or just my hand, I clean the creep around the rim of the tank 
and especially off my Prism ATO. You got to keep those sensors clean. Number two, harvest some Catamorpha. Now I'm not gonna do this for a while, at least until that Cato grows and fills that rear filtration chamber, but eventually I'll need to pull off a chunk of Cato and dispose of it every week because that's the only way to remove those nitrates and phosphates from the water. Number three, wipe down the tank. This just keeps things pretty. You can use RODI water in a spray bottle or Tunza makes an aquarium safe cleaner that also does a fantastic job. On top of cleaning the glass, I will also wipe off the dust and the salt creep from my lights to keep them working really well for a long time. My fifth every other week task is to make fresh seawater. I'll mix up a batch of Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt in my 50 gallon drum. This salt stores long term quite well and quite cleanly and I will keep it heated and circulated so it's always ready if there's ever an emergency. The sixth and final every other week task is to make a fresh batch of RODI water. Same thing here, I make 50 gallons at a time in a drum and always have those 50 gallons on hand in case of emergency. And finally, on to our monthly tasks, I only have two. First is to gently gravel vac a part of the sand bed. Since I have an automatic water change system set up, I don't gravel vac the sand bed every week. So once a month, I'll gently clean about 20% of the sand bed at a time. This means that every five months, the entire sand bed will have been cleaned. And then once a month, only as needed, I'll add a bag of activated carbon to clear up the water, especially those yellow tannins. There are also some long-term tasks that we've mentioned in other videos, but what I'm really excited about now is to take all of these new skills and build something amazing. We've already made some beautiful tanks, and if you want to as well, check out these videos. Thanks for watching, happy reefing, be well! and we'll see you in the next series.